So this is the start of our um, fluvial processes section um, for metric geography. So the first section we're going to look at is river profiles. We're looking at the upper, middle and lower courses of rivers, which you should hopefully be familiar with by now. So this is um, a sketch of a longitudinal profile of a river. So what you're looking at here is the cross section, essentially. I think I put a waterfall in there. Um, but what you'll notice is it's as if you were looking at the mountain from the side. Um, and you've got the source of the river up on the left hand side there. Um, your upper course all the way down to your very flat lower course. So, yep, there's the upper, middle lower courses of that river. Um, so our upper course of the river, it tends to be where the source is. Um, so that is your um, very top, you've got very steep slopes um, and the water is moving quite fast um, at uh, steep gradients. And then um, the middle is a little bit more kind of relaxed. It's not super fast, but it's not flat yet. Um, and the um, lower course of the river tends to be the base level um, to the lowest point that the river can erode to. So what I've drawn here is um, the transverse profiles of the river. So at the upper course, we've got, we've got a V-shaped valley over there. So that is a very steep sides. Um, and then at the middle course, it starts to get a little bit more um, eroded. We've got a lot of weathering happening in the middle course. And so you'll find that V-shape will still be there. It just won't be as pronounced. Um, so you've got hills, but um, the, the valley's gotten a bit wider. Um, and then you get to your lower course of the river. And they it will almost look U-shaped. Um, but in that sense, it's a rather large floodplain. Um, and that means that if the water if the river floods, there's a massive floodplain for the water to spread out over because it's so flat. So yeah, these are our longitudinal versus transverse profiles. So we're looking at one image of the river from the side, and then the transverse is if you're standing at the bottom of the river and looking up um, towards the, the source. So focusing on the upper course of the river, so we've drawn one of these already, uh, the transverse profile, but this is the, the source, so mostly first and second order streams. Um, small amount of water, but it is moving fast. Um, and you've got uh, erosion vertically. Um, so this is the kind of area where, we, where you'll find things like your waterfalls and your gorges. Uh, it's very narrow. Um, it's also, um, so it's very steep. Uh, and it can carry heavy load because gravity is working. Um, so the material, or the load is carried quite quickly. Um, and so it can carry a lot of heavy things because of that gravity. So this is an example of the Macnac Falls in Mpumalanga. And if you have a look at where the waterfall is actually coming out, you can see a V shape. Um, and that just shows quite nicely how the sides of that upper course are quite steep. So the next one we're going to look at is our um, middle course of the river. So tributaries have joined in here. Um, and so the volume of water that's being carried is quite a bit bigger than with the upper course. Um, so we've got that, still that V shape, but it's a lot wider. Um, the river banks are eroding laterally and the open V is kind of what we just use to describe this, this wider V shape. Um, so it's, it's got like a medium gradient um, and is just generally wider than your upper course. What we actually notice with our middle course is we'll start seeing some um, features that we would normally see in the lower course. So our meanders we'll start to see in the middle course, but your true meanders um, and oxbow lakes are going to show up in the lower course. Um, so the middle gradient, um, <laughs> not too steep and not too flat, uh, not too gentle. 
um, just right. That is our middle course of the river. Um, and this is an example of the middle course of a river in Yorkshire. Um, so if you look at the very top of the picture, you can actually see the slopes of the hill. Um, so you can see that it's got that V shape, but it's not as steep um, as that upper course. Now we're going to look at the lower course. And this is our very flat area. Our floodplain tends to be um, quite wide. Uh, our river will meander generally um, through this area, um, so it's U-shaped um, as a valley, and and the actual rivers themselves become almost U-shaped. But we will look into that when we start looking at um, the carrying of a load um, at this stage. So it's much wider, it's a gentler gradient, um, and it can suspend a lot of matter. It can suspend a lot of load, but it has to be small load because it doesn't have the same amount of power behind it there is less gravity at work um, so your lo lower course can carry a lot because there is a lot of water at this stage but it can't carry a lot of heavy things so it tends to carry your sands and your silts and your water will often look like orangey or muddy um, because of what it is carrying um, so that's the lower course of the river and then coming up, we have a photograph of a braided river. So this is where the river ex is exceptionally flat. Um, so normally we would find that deeper part of the, the valley would be where the river goes. But here it just goes um, wherever it needs to.